come out tomorrow. You may know her as the newest coach on The Voice, but did you know Ariana Grande actually began out on Broadway? That's just one of the things from her early career. Let's take a look into Ariana Grande then and now. Hey guys, it's Corey, and for today's What's Hot, we're gonna take a look at Ariana Grande's career and everything that encompasses it. Let me tell you, I could go on forever about this 28-year-old's career, but I'll keep it condensed for the sake of YouTube. Ariana Grande has seriously accomplished so much, so let's get right into it. When Ariana was a child, she was a part of Fort Lauderdale's Children's Theater. At this theater is where her stardom was really born. It was in this theater group that she had her first lead role playing the title character in Annie. When you're in an orphanage, it's a hard knock life. She also performed in their musicals The Wizard of Oz and The Beauty and the Beast. How much fun did we have together? It's so fun, but it went by so fast and I'm so sad that it's almost done. Ariana really began her career at only 15 years old when she was a part of the Broadway musical 13. If you guys have seen our other video on Ariana, you probably already know what other actress from Victoria is in 13 with her. And here's a hint. It goes back to the music. It's just stuff that's so great for our kind of voices and it's so much fun to sing that we just all eat it up and we have so much fun. After her time on Broadway, she was cast as the iconic role of Cat Valentine in Victorious on Nickelodeon. Victorious was an immediate hit for Nickelodeon, and its viewership quickly became the second highest the network had ever seen. Hey, Parnell, you wanna eat some pancakes on a rocket ship? For this role, Ariana had to dye her hair bright red every other week, which is extremely damaging and became a huge issue in the future. I hate spiders too, but if a spider was having a birthday party, I could swing by for some cake. When the first season Victorious wrapped, Grande began her debut album. To prepare for the album's release, she started working with vocal coach Eric Vetro. During this time, Ariana made her first musical appearance on the Victorious soundtrack for the song Give It Up, a straight bop if you haven't heard it. From there, she literally couldn't stop singing. Between takes, she would film herself singing Adele, Whitney Houston, and Mariah Carey covers and upload them to YouTube. As a result of this, the CEO of Republic Records offered Ariana her very first record deal. In December of 2011, Ariana released her first single, Put Your Hearts Up. This song was a dictionary definition of bubblegum pop, and it's said to have been part of a teen-oriented album that was never released. To this day, Ariana disowns this track. It wasn't the vibe she wanted to go for, and it's now hidden on her Vivo page. It's kind of sad, too, considering this is certified gold. I can't help it. <laughs> it's so good. But Nickelodeon saw how much of a hit both Victorious and iCarly were, so from there, they decided to make a spin-off series named Sam and Cat, which only lasted for a year. Around this time is when Ariana started wearing a wig for the red hair. Yarp. But you don't have a bank account. Nope. On August 30th, 2013, she released her first album, Yours Truly. Guilty pleasure, still my favorite. This album debuted at number one on the US Billboard Top 200 Albums chart, and this album sold 138,000 copies in its first week. Ariana's lead single from this album was her first hit on the Billboard Top 100 chart. It was The Way featuring Mac Miller, and it debuted at number 10 and stayed at number nine for two weeks. Absolute stardom. I got a bad boy. Amid her newfound fame, Ariana joined Justin Bieber for three shows of his Believe Tour. And from there, she kicked off her own mini tour, The Listening Sessions. In the same year, this singer was on the Billboard magazine's Music Hottest Minors 2013 list as number four, won the New Artist of the Year at the American Music Awards, and she even won the title of Breakthrough Artist from the Music Business Association. During this time, she even put out her first Christmas EP. Santa, tell me. Then, in the August of 2014, Ariana released her second album, My Everything, also a bop. If you thought Ariana hit peak stardom before this album, you were so wrong. The Billboard chart ratings, the awards, and the recognitions kept rolling in for this singer. Some of the biggest songs from this album are Problem featuring Iggy Azalea, Bang Bang featuring Nicki Minaj and Jessie J, and Love Me Harder, which featured The Weeknd. 
Oh, oh, oh. And we can't forget, we can't forget Break Free featuring Zed. Oh my God, this music video lives rent free in my head. This was really the era of music where Ariana was becoming the singer that we know and love her as today. During this time, she joined Adele as the only female artist with three top 10 singles simultaneously on the Billboard Hot 100 as a lead artist. That's insane. In 2015, Ariana went on her first worldwide tour, the Honeymoon Tour. In the same year, she guest starred in episodes of Fox's series, Scream Queens, and released her second Christmas EP, Christmas and Chill. In the next year, Ariana released Dangerous Woman. At this time, 22-year-old Ariana Grande premiered a new and improved sexy sound. Personally, I thought these songs were a bit more lyrical than her 2014 album, but that's up to interpretation. In the 2016 music video for Dangerous Woman was also one of the first times that fans saw the singer with her brown hair down instead of half up, half down. So this was monumental. Everything was going great for Grande in 2016. She headlined the opening night of the second annual Billboard Hot 100 Music Festival, returned to Broadway as Penny Pingleton in NBC's Hairspray Live, and even went on her third tour. Hardly recognize y'all done up like that. I'm a pretty girl, mama. On May 22nd, 2017, Ariana's life changed completely. Her concert in the Manchester Arena was the target of a suicide bombing. This bombing left 23 people killed and hundreds injured. Immediately after the incident, Ariana canceled the rest of her tour, and on June 4th, she organized a concert called One Love Manchester. This concert raised $23 million to aid in the bombing victims and affected families' lives. The one who takes you home, As of 2018, Ariana revealed that therapy has helped her through the coping process, but she still cries a lot when this concert is mentioned. Spent a ton of time in therapy last year. So recommend it if you like need it. Ariana began working on her fourth album in 2016, but the project's timeline got reset following the Manchester concert. But her fourth album of Sweetener did premiere in 2018. This album was an instant hit. Everybody was so excited to hear Ariana putting out new music, and Sweetener was loved so much by Ariana fans that she won her first Grammy for it. Sweetener, Ariana Grande. Right. Uh, not here, so we're going to accept this on her behalf. During the same year, Ariana's world was rocked once again, though. In September of 2018, Mac Miller, her ex-boyfriend, tragically passed away from a drug overdose. Now, even though Mac and Ariana had been split for, from two years of dating, and she was quickly engaged to Pete Davidson, Ariana was still really upset about Mac's passing. They had remained friends since their split, and you know, her next studio album talked a lot about her late boyfriend, to the point where she sometimes had a hard time performing any of the songs. In January 2018, Ariadas hit Seven Rings and the Thank You Next Empire was born. This single debuted at number one and this song broke streaming and recording industry records. It also made her the third female artist with multiple number one debuts after Mariah Carey and Britney Spears. The album itself premiered on February 8th, 2019, and I think you know what happened from there. Flash forward to 2021, and Ariana Grande is still a household name. Her last album, Positions, came out almost a year ago on October 30th, 2020. In the 2020 Grammy Awards, Grande won her second Grammy ever for Rain On Me with Lady Gaga. Rain On Me, Lady Gaga with Ana, A Ariana Grande, Lordy Jesus. Now in 2021, this singer is now one of our celebrity coaches on The Voice and is days away from releasing her makeup line, Rem Beauty. Ariana skyrocketed to fame and has basically stayed up there since she began. Her days on Victorious were only the beginning of her career. Now that you're an Ariana Grande expert, let me know which part of her career you remember the best in the comments down below. And also be sure to comment any detail about her that I might have missed.
I'll always have a soft spot for yours truly, but Positions has quickly become my most played album by Ariana, so you know, I'm just saying. As always, while you're still on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Follow Talent Recap on all social media platforms and head on over to our website, talentrecap.com, to stay updated on your favorite competition shows and their stars. You guys want to follow me? I'm at Corey Caesar on Instagram. And now you know what's hot. All right, now, thank you. Next. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I think you should hit the subscribe button down below and then we can talk.